We know from the very first moment that we got a sneak peek at the Little Mermaid, there's been a lot of fan backlash. There's been a lot of negativity surrounding this from the audience. People are tired of Disney live action remakes. They're tired of how soulless they are. They're tired of how terrible they look in terms of visual effects and CGI. And they're also sick of identity politics. Whether you're talking about race swap characters, whether you're talking about changing lyrics for the modern world, whether you're talking about making this movie acceptable for a modern feminist message, that's not really what people are looking for, at least when it comes to the audience. Someone who is looking for that are the critics. And the critics are out in force defending the Little Mermaid, Jeremy. They're all saying effectively the same thing. Now, even though some of them say it's the best thing ever and some of them saying, well, you know, it's good. It might not live up to the original. They are all saying the same exact thing about the lead actress. Halle Bailey is just the most perfect person for Ariel. She can do no wrong. She gave an incredible performance and in the case of some people like grace randolph she says if you find anything to hate about this movie that says a lot about you because there's nothing to hate and in fact all of them should be black that's <laughs> basically what grace randolph has said did you see that clip i saw that clip and i saw her video look i still stand by what my concerns are that unfortunately i think this movie's going to probably do well at the box office i don't know if it's going to make a billion dollars but and i know we're in a different time but like these disney live action movies aladdin made a billion a lot of them have done really well i think that this movie has the potential to do well you can tell by a lot of the reactions that they don't like the movie but they know they can't criticize it either you can tell the by the language it's not the greatest movie ever but Haley Hallie whatever her fucking name is Hallie Bailey she shines and she's wonderful and she's glorious and and all of that you can tell just by how they're structuring it the general public there's something with these old school Disney films the Lion King making 1.6 billion made me lose my faith in humanity so here we are with this don't you feel like and this I is a little bit different though like I think I think so. I'm not saying this is going to make 1.6 billion. Yeah. I think that this movie could make a profit. What does it need to make a profit? Well, it's 200 million dollars. I imagine the market is massive for this between all the different uh, places we've seen it advertised, including the Oscars and Super Bowl, all this stuff. So, like, I would guess that it's probably its break even points around 600 million. Yeah, uh, I, I could see it definitely making money. And trust me, I hope I'm wrong because uh, I think this movie deserves to fail with all of the nonsense um, surrounding it. But if this movie does make money, it, it's going to be a huge problem because Disney's just going to continue to push their identity policy, which they already are. But what we've seen with Marvel is they're clearly going to have to adjust because of what's been going on with Marvel and the failures of Marvel. And I guess I'm kind of in that same spot with this movie as I was with something like Thor Love and Thunder, which oh, I was wrong about Thor Love and Thunder. I thought Thor Love and Thunder was going to make a billion. I didn't see Thor Love and Thunder, but just based on, you know, Chris Hemsworth, Guardians, and just that whole kind of whimsical take they were they were going on, I felt like it would. The Marvel Cinematic Universe was hurt far more than I realized. Hopefully that's the same situation with this movie. Yeah, I feel like this feels a little bit different. There wasn't YouTube trailers with 3.6 million dislikes for The Lion King or Aladdin or any Beauty and the Beast, any of this stuff. You know, the follow-up trailer didn't have 2 million dislikes. There, there just seems to be so much negativity surrounding the movie. And obviously, a lot of that's from people who probably wouldn't have gone to see it anyway, maybe. And maybe it's not, they're not the target You're right. audience. But I just, to me, I don't know if there's going to be the same. Because I think a big reason why those movies are successful is it has to do with people in kind of our type of generation who watch those movies when we were kids, taking their kids to go and see a movie, um, a live action adaptation for themselves and for their kids. I don't think that same energy is going to be there for this movie because it doesn't feel like, I, I don't feel nostalgia from this movie. I don't know how many people are because quite frankly, it just doesn't look like the characters that you're remembering. It doesn't feel and, like the characters. But let's listen to Grace Randolph. This <laughs> is what can hurt the film if we get more talking points like this from the media that we can signal boost to show that they're weaponizing this. This is what can hurt the movie. It's funny because she's about to go into this whole thing on why she thinks literally everyone in the movie should probably be black. Um, <laughs> and she's like, you can tell she clearly had like this entire like Charlie Day web of how everything needs to connect to each other. For her to try to explain it away but here we go <laughs> nothing to hate about this movie absolutely nothing you know if anyone hates on it again that's a commentary on themselves uh as for race bending ariel i continue to stand by my comments that you can't have all these caribbean musical numbers and a white ariel here they <laughs> oh my so, god like, in the 
So the first fucking movie, right? She's saying the animated version of Ariel should have been black. That it was a mistake oh for her to be a white redhead. She should have been black. That's what you're saying. We did shoot in Italy. All over the end credits, they're like, we're in Sardinia. And I'm like, it must be very pretty there. But And I wish they hadn't done that because it's going to give fuel to the haters. Uh, that really sucks. But anyway, maybe they wanted like the fairy tale element to the wide shots of the castle. But I mean, it's clearly in a Caribbean setting. It's like, again, as I said, Jack Sparrow could wander into this movie and he would totally fit. Why? He's not black. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? But uh, come on, there are steel drums. Loved them. And while the aristocrats in Eric's kingdom talk with a British accent, Trinidad was a British colony from, 19, uh, from 1889 to 1962. But a lot of the people, you know, not the aristocrats, but the regular people of Eric's kingdom, they speak with a Trinidad accent. Just well, she's got all her, wi her Wikipedia notes there on the side that you can see her going them. to to try to like yep. tell the story of this specific country, this specific time frame. Yep. Like Sebastian does. So it would be ridiculous for a white Ariel to be in this environment. And truth be told, there are many moments when watching the movie where one has to wonder why Eric is still white instead of black or Latino, especially when the queen is black. It's sort of explained. There's kind of a mystery there. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe this whole clusterfuck of a movie makes no sense. Maybe that's the case, Grace. Maybe that's the whole point behind what we've been saying the whole time. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know the queen was black until now either, uh, which they don't explain. <laughs> you never really solve, maybe in a sequel. But also... I can't wait for the sequel to The Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid 2, Why Eric's Mom is Black. Uh, <laughs> that, that's the sequel everyone wanted. You know, after I was watching, you know, like, I'd say maybe two-thirds in, I was like, ah, oh, you know, this is interesting because by keeping Eric white, you're kind of underscoring that a human and a mermaid's romance has similarities to an interracial romance. So I do think that tracks. I think Jesus that tracks. But you know Christ. what? These things are all very now, So you're saying, you're saying a white person and a black person getting together is the same as a human and a mermaid? Yeah, you're saying that like interracial <laughs> dating is the same as like human to subhuman species and stuff. What? What? Grace's gone down the rabbit hole, man. <laughs> She's going down the rabbit hole. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. You know, a big stigma about interracial dating in 2023. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god don't worry jeremy it's very subtle all right it's very subtle according to her god. this is not a preachy movie whatsoever it is there to entertain and sweep you off your feet to remind you of the 1989 classic but also bring you that disney magic in its own right so again there is nothing to hate about this movie you'd have to work at hating it but unfortunately we know that some people will but it's it's engineered to be a crowd pleaser, and I think it is. God damn it, dude. The mental gymnastics in order to justify this movie.